<laughs> All right, so uh, James, let's just start, bro. What happened? Why are you here talking to me now instead of later in the season? I feel like my threat level got super duper high and I couldn't manage it. Uh, I get into the merge and I want to just relax and sit back and boom, I'm a target. I talk with Ellie, I'm like, I'm not getting a good feeling. I'm a target that boom. I'm gonna target the next vote. What people don't realize is the next vote where Janine goes home. Me and Janine have a great conversation on the beach after we sent, after Dwight gets voted out. The next morning, like Noel runs up to me and is like, Janine is trying to vote you out again <laughs> on the beach. And I'm like, I thought we were good. Like, I thought, so like, it kind of like being a target, those three votes and making it through those three votes kind of just raised everybody's kind of suspicions. Like he's building a lot of good relationships. This is somebody that we don't want to sit next to at the end. And I wasn't trying to do that, but it happened. Well, you definitely looked surprised when you got voted out. You also looked kind of pissed. Were you pissed? I mean, I'd be pissed. Were you pissed? I mean, yeah, it's like, yeah, like I've been watching this game. Like I, I'm like, I've been watching this game for like, the, like since it came out. And I've been, I watched multiple seasons and like, it's that emotion. Like I was playing hard. I wanted to win. I wanted to be there. I felt like I was putting myself in position to win. I had a lot of outs. And with this kind of how everything shook out, this is probably one of the worst ways it could shake out from a number standpoint, from the work that I did. And, and you know, that happens. And it's up to me to adapt and to make the moves to get me further. And I just didn't do that. So kudos to, you know, them getting me. So it is what it is. I mean, I understand why they wanted to get you out, but why, why do you think Carla turned on you? Because that did surprise me. When Sammy went up to her with that plan, I'm like, oh dude, you're making a big mistake here. She's tight with James. This ain't gonna work. And then it did, what happened? I feel like it was, it's, I feel like it's a good way. So like, so we just back it up and just say, let's say Carla really wanted me to stay. Uses their idol for me. Now Carla puts her foot down in the sands and this is where I'm at. Now Carla still has the flexibility to move within the people still in the game being an amical ally. The only question now is kind of like, is, how is that going to work? Because I was one of the people that took all the attention. So now the game is wide open. I know the fans are happy. So it's like, I'm out the game, the game's wide open. Everybody's a target is a great thing. What, how'd you feel about that in the moment when you see that it's unanimous going against you? Oh no, I mean, I was, I was upset, but I understand the game. We all came out here to play super duper hard. You just see, I wear my emotions on the sleeve. Like even for challenges, like before a challenge, I'm just super relaxed and calm. But once that, you know, final tribal council hits, once we're we're, we're on the we're on the on the mat chat, I'm ready to rock and roll and play. And I was playing pretty hard, so I was just excited to be out there. So yes, I was mad I was voted out, but hey, man, everybody should be mad they voted out. Like you really want to yeah. win and play this game. That's exactly right. And and you know what, what we've been wanting to see that passion more this season and see maybe some people button heads and we. We finally got that this week with you and Owen going at it. Why were you two like oil and water out there? Why wasn't it working? I just feel like it was a lot of miscommunication um, where in the beginning, uh, like, so what people don't realize is like the, the Dwight vote also, when I talked to Sammy, I talked to Sammy and Owen. So I tell them both, the vote is going against Dwight before that vote. So when you go to the next episode, you see Owen didn't want to hop on board. So it was kind of like, I told Owen the plan. I'm, I was inviting Owen to try to work and he, then he still tried to vote me out. So from my point of view, I'm saying, I tried to put you in on the Dwight vote. You didn't want to be on that vote. Now you're mad at me for lying to you when you didn't want to vote out Janine. Like that's just me playing the game when everybody else was in on it, it wasn't just me. So it's kind of like you're singling me out and you're mad at me, but literally I'm playing the game and I'm not even like targeting you at that point. I'm not even like thinking about you in that type of sense is that Janine is your ally. You didn't want that to happen. If there's a unanimous vote, I wanted to vote on Ryan. Therefore, we wanted to vote on Ryan so that if something happened, Ryan went home. Cause Ryan was kind of looked at as a spendable piece within the game. He kept calling you like essentially Don Corleone out there. Were you the godfather? Were you the godfather on the island, James? I, I, I definitely wasn't the godfather on the island. If I wasn't the godfather, I would still be out there. Um, I feel like from his perception of the game, based on information he had, it looked like that I was manipulating a lot of the moves. And I did have a lot of good relationships. Like for instance, Gabriel was going to use his idol on me if there was idol again in the merge. Like. There were like, people see these things happening that they're not on the show. For instance, I gave Sammy my knowledge is power going into the Dwight vote at Tribal. So we have my knowledge is power. So building trust and getting allies is, they're seeing that happen and it kind of bit me in the butt. No, wait, why did you give Sammy your knowledge is power? Because I wanted him to cement the trust to say, I'm coming back. Because that's how Cody didn't know that he was in on that vote. If you look at the confessional. 
So me and Carla was working on Cody on, on Sammy. So like we wanted to make sure the game was fluid, and that's why we told Owen. But it kind of people were really kind of stuck in the Baka Vesey kind of thought process in the beginning of this game. And you never had any thoughts about using that knowledge as power to steal Noel's steal a vote because you thought you were good, right? No, it's, it's more so. I just at this point, if Carla wants me out, you have a unanimous vote to just vote me out. At this point, if I still know Wells' vote, right? Let's say she's not on my side. I still know Wells' vote, right? Even if I, I can vote, but if everybody's against me, they just send me home. And Carla still gains two new allies who really saved, he saved Owen because I voted for Owen with two votes. Now she has a super big ally. So if Carla wants me gone in that instance, it makes sense to get rid of me. And today, also, I felt like the vote still would be a, a stronger move at eight because it's easier to use and it's more powerful at eight, where you don't need as many people to actually use it. Therefore, you come in with the big numbers, you know, with Coco and Sammy and Jesse, get back with Bessie, and now we're moving forward, and now you have this vote still, so you have immense power moving forward. So I just looked at it like it didn't make sense to really kind of use it, but if you want to, fine. And if Carla wants me to go home, I'm probably going home. It happened, I thought I was good, and you know, that's the game. Did the producers uh, let you keep that parchment, the knowledge power, or did they swipe it from you once you uh, went over to Ponderosa? Def definitely didn't keep that piece of parchment. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a bummer. Uh, look, I saw you tweeting about it. I want to talk about the voice. Uh, uh, because here's what's interesting to me, James. It's not like, why does your voice sound like that? Because that's A, a dumb question. B, there's no answer for that question. But your voice did sound different at Tribal Council than on the beach. Like the voice we heard you at Tribal Council is not what your voice sounds like right now. There was oh, something oh, going yeah, on. Yeah, like it happens. Like I feel like it's one of those things where like depending on situation, energy level, like my voice, does, I do, I do kind of have two different voices. And like people that know me know that's kind of how I operate, but it probably is offsetting to people who aren't used to being around me. So it's a fun little thing, James, talking to the fan and all this other stuff, but it's just my voice, you know? Um, some people think it's soothing. Some people think it's not. It is what it, it kind of is what it is. So it's my voice. <sighs> what was, dude, what was your long-term plan? Like you're looking, to, and obviously you gotta be adaptable. You gotta move as, and shift as things happen. But like in your head, who are you thinking that you wanted to sit next to at the end? So at, at the end, I was thinking about, I just wanted to get to the end. So my philosophy was I will sit next to anybody based on the game that I was forced to play. I didn't really, wasn't too fearful about what allocation of people I was sitting next to at the end. I just knew getting to the end is the key as opposed to trying to figure out who I'm sitting next to. Cause I'm gonna play the game the way I the best way I see possible. So I was really open to almost any option for the most part, but you only can really work with the options that are presented to you. So if people aren't presenting options, if the game isn't flowing, you only can do what's available based on the options that you have. But I mean, I would love to go to in with Carla and Cass. Me and Cody were super tight out there. Like, like I mean, me and Cody were super tight. I probably didn't really show that. So would have loved to battle out with Cody at the end. Me and Jesse became tight out there. Believe it or not, me and Sammy were super tight out there. So um, I, I felt like I had a lot of outs on the island as far as getting past this eight, as far as figuring out different combinations to get to the end. Gabler, me and Gabler are pretty solid as well. I, I always like to know, because you know, there's so much that doesn't make the episodes. And you've talked about some of the things we didn't get to see because they can't fit everything in. What's something else that like happened out there that like you wish had made it to TV? Like when it happened, you're like, oh, I can't wait to see how this, like they sh when they show this, then it doesn't make it or anything like that. Yeah, I, I feel like the first night when we first merged, me and Cody had a really good talk. So what happened was, like everybody would sleep behind Ryan's big little contraction. But I was, I started a fire and I'm like, and I didn't sleep out there. So I was just always keeping fire up at night. So literally by the end of the night, everybody was sleeping by the fire. Me and Cody had some, me and Cody just had some great talks that first night. So I learned about the beads. I learned about the kind of dynamics. We kind of cemented the talk that me and Cody were having on at, when he came over to the tribe ring, where he cemented that the neck of vote wasn't really his vote. He didn't really feel tight with Noel and Dwight. So we, we were hashing all this stuff out that first night. So that was a really cool moment where we were really building that, that, that night. And to be, to be clear, because you just mentioned the beads, everyone knew about everyone's idols, right? Because everyone had the same bead test? No, so, all right, so literally, <laughs> Carla got her beads separate. I feel like that was the one thing about it. Was, and then with Lindsay and Gio going home, right? Lindsay and Gio went home, Carla got her beads separate. I got the beat information, but that day, literally, I'm not thinking, is it like Cass asked me for beads, Lindsay's asked me for beads? Like, I literally forgot. We were playing Kumbaya because Survivor. And at the end of the day, I thought, if anything happens, Carla may tell me she has an idol and she's not gonna use it against me. So like, I'm not like super worried. Plus the threat of them not knowing that we had an idol was causing them to split the votes. So they don't know where the Coco idol is or if there is one. That's why that first vote, they're like, let's split the, split the votes on Cassidy and James. Next time on James and Ryan. Because they didn't know where the idol was. You have to experience out there. 
uh, what getting voted out. We see you kind of messing with your buff on the jury. It's going off. It's going on. What was it like watching it play back on TV? What was that experience like for you? I mean, it's fun. I mean, it's your dream. Like literally, I've been watching this game like multiple seasons, thinking about the moves you're going to make, and just being able to get out there and kind of feel the pressure, understand when people like when, when Christians like you can't. You, you're not operating at your kind of your best. We're, when you're on the couch, you're thinking, oh man, I, I should have worded this differently. I could have worded this differently. Just little things can really change how someone perceives you. And these conversations are precious. So like one time when you're tired and you say something wrong or phrase something differently can really be the end of you in this game. Man, it was it was a blast to watch you. Uh, I like watching people that fight and scratch and claw and that's what you were doing, either whether it was going through the mud in that net or whether it was going at Owen a little bit. I love to see it. Uh, and it was a blast to watch you, which it could have been more, man. Thank you. Appreciate that.